fully wire mod here. I'm going to be going over Hollow Knight version 3. And let's start by unfreezing these props. And I want you to note that you have to actually unfreeze the back of the screen as well. So let's turn the sheet and you'll notice it jumps to life and it will follow you around until a maximum limit which will just fall on the ground. And so you get back in range, it'll follow you again. Now, right here is the plate where you're going to edit your holograms and whatnot, and that's going to be the origin of spawn. So something I've actually implemented is whenever the screen right here gets in your way, like right here, you can't really see the hologram while editing it as opposed to here, it'll actually move. So this happens in every single quadrant around the um, Expression 2 chip. Now, getting into the screen, there was some stuff posted, or pasted rather, in the chat box, which tells you some useful information, like turn the key to start, we already went through that. Now you can press the use key or attack one key to push buttons, you can press attack two to remove the currently selected hologram, or you can type command, or slash command, cmd, and it will provide you a command list, which we'll get into in a little bit. So let's start by going over the basic function of the screen. Here we have the home screen, and it tells you buttons are defined by a rectangle shape, as uh, seen in these tabs above, a circle shape, as seen as the hollow select buttons down below, and an oval shape, which is used for the generate button and the save button. So by pressing use on one of these buttons, let's see, button number two, it spawned hologram number two, and then chat even says hollow two is created and selected. And I can remove it by pressing right click and it'll unselect it. Now, when editing values for this hologram, you can actually edit them while the hologram is created or removed. So, if you want to make edits, but you don't want to keep the hologram and for now, but you might want to use it later, you can actually just save it and store it as a hologram which is going to be invisible. So, right here we have, to the left, we have three different graphs. This is the XY plane, the YZ plane, and the XZ plane. And this is going to measure the scale, so let's get into the position menu right here. And you notice you can edit the hologram's angle, scale, position, and we have change rate right here. Change rate governs how much change you're actually making when you press each of these buttons. You can go up to a maximum of a thousand, and it'll easily reach the max values of the angle and scale. Uh, there's no max values for position. So I'm trusting you'll keep it in reasonable bounds. Or, you can go to a minimum of 0 0.01, which you can make minute changes to the hologram. And if you want to get rid of those minute changes, you simply press the round button on each of these functions. You can press the reset button to reset it to default values. So let's modify the scale so you can get an idea of what the graphs look like. So I'm going to edit the X value, and you notice the lines for the X uh, axis on both graphs have increased according to the size of the hologram. The model will not impair these graphs at all. They will still read the same X, Y, and Z distances. So we have an X distance right here. Let's spawn hologram number two. Now we're going to edit the Y distance. And then you have hologram number Z, or three rather, which you're editing the Z distance. And just real quick, you remember how I said it spins. It actually spins according to what quadrant around the Expression 2 chip you're in. So my screen is going to rotate upon crossing these lines. You can reset these values by going to the reset value, or reset button. It'll reset every single value in the position and the skin. And But it will not unselect or remove the hologram. You have to actually right click to do that. So let's spawn back hologram number one. And let's go into the skin. You can edit the model to up to one of 43 different models. Or 42, I forget which one it is. And this includes the high quality models as well. You can edit the skin to one of 42 skins. You can edit the color by either changing the color manually here and the alpha as well to determine how transparent it is. Or you can select one of the colors right here, 
predefined colors, which will automatically set it to the color that you click on. Now, you have a generate function, and a save function, and a load function. Let's start with load. What load does is it actually, what, what you do is you type in a file name which you previously saved, and you do not have to add the .txt extension to the end of the file name, and what it'll do is it'll uh, go into your data slash e2 files folder and take that file and generate the hologram in which you saved earlier. So I have one already saved called Epic Sword. As you can see as soon as I do that it loads all 20 holograms involved. And it'll store even the most minute values all the way up to decimal points. As you can see the hilt on the sword it's a little tricky. You actually had to alter the decimal points. I believe it's number 7 or 8 on here. You can see it goes into decimal ranges on the scale and whatnot. Now I have a generate function. What the generate function does is it takes all the information right here for each hologram and turns it into expression2 code and prints it into your console. So right here we have all the expression2 code right here. And all I have to do is press copy and let's go over here and go to the expression2 to tool click on new expression paste it into this new expression and paste and well it's a little awkward right here let's, let's pick a little smoother grass there we go. and as you can see it's all pasted exactly how it was over here Now I have another load function which is used so I can just clear out all these holograms. So I call it clear. And let's say you wanna you wanna save a uh, hologram and you make some random properties to it. Um, let, let's actually go over the commands real quick. So to make this easier. You have a command called random, which allows you to randomly generate properties for a hologram so you can see it's a little faded right here. I'll actually go and edit the alpha real quick so you can see this a little bit better. Here we have a nice plane. And let's say I want to copy the properties of plane to um, number 10. Or I just want to copy all the individual things. Well I can go to the commands and we have a command called copy which copies and prints all the raw data of all the holograms which is used for the load code to your screen so you can actually copy every single property of the hologram where the last number of each line indicates what number of hologram you're dealing with and we're gonna grab hologram number seven's properties and say we want to put it to number nine well what's cool about the copy is you can actually go in and modify the values yourself for when you're trying to paste code so let's say I want to take number 8 as well. The first number in the line indicates is it on or is it off? Like is it selected or not selected? Uh, the second number through um, fourth number is going to indicate the, the um, scale. The next three are going to be your angle. The next three are going to be your position, then your color, then your alpha. And this is your model number and this is your material number. So what this is going to do is it's going to take everything from number 9. I'm going to actually move the value of hologram number 8. Or no, hologram number 9, sorry. I'm going to make it go up some and I'm going to make it go in the y-axis 20 units. And for this I'm going to make it just go up to 100. So you can see what's going on. So let's copy this and take from the copy code. And now we have a command called paste. So let's type paste. And it says type up to two lines from your copy code, which we have two lines right here. And let's paste it. And now as you can see, you have another hologram, which is exactly the same as hologram number seven. And then you have the cube that we pasted for hologram number eight. Right there. Now let's say I want to actually, I want to take a shortcut to this method, and I don't want to edit any values, I just want the straightforward hologram itself. Now let's take number 9, and 
you notice all these values right here. We're going to actually clone these values with the command called clone number. So let's go to hologram number 11. And I want to clone all the values from hologram number 9. So I'm going to type clone number 9. And it creates an exact clone. So we have hologram number 11. I will raise the Z axis real quick for you so that you can see it is indeed a clone. And you can see right here that it has been copied exactly as was from hologram number 9. So let's save this and we'll call it example.txt. But remember, you don't have to add .txt extension, just the name. So I'll say successfully saved example. Then let's reset all these values. And get rid of number three as well. And now let's load example. And there you have it. It's exactly how it was loaded before. It uses the same exact values. And pretty much that's everything that HoloMaker version 3 has to offer. If you have any more ideas and suggestions that I should implement for HoloMaker version 4, please let me know. Until then, I'll see you next time.